In this particular session, we will continue with our mobile security framework and we will analyze our Android application. So let's get started. This was the basic interface that we have encountered in our previous session. This time I already have a scan run there. So this was our application that we have scanned in the last session, Riverbit application. So if I directly go with a static report here, just go with the report. If you don't have any scan run before, just go with a static analyzer upload and analyze button here click on this button and this will give you the browse option then just select your application that you want to analyze and this will give you the basic information about your application now the analysis start from the basic informational part here under the mob sf this will give you the basic file name the file size and different hash for your different algorithms out there then you will also get your application name that was specified inside your manifest file. If you go with the manifest file from here, you can see the name was defined here under your name here should be there. Yeah, we got the name here like Android label and string slash app name inside your strings dot dot XML file. You will get a variable with the name app underscore name and that particular variable contain your application name Diva. Under this, you will get your package name as Jakarasim Diva. The same package name was also specified inside your manifest file, which you can see here. Package equals to jakar.asim.diva. After that part, you go to your main activity here, which was again, all you know, all the components were declared, were defined inside your manifest file. Then we got the target SDK, minimum SDK, and your maximum SDK as blank. Then we got Android version for the application and your Android version code here. Under this basic informational part, we go to your application component, like how many activities were there, and out of those activities, how many activities can be exported, how many intent filters were defined inside your manifest file. If you go with these activities, and if you go with the manifest file, you can see for two different activities here. Like first one was your jakarasimdiva.api credential activity, and for this particular activity, we got your intent filter if there were intent filter for any of the component it defines that your component was exported and you can directly call your component through your adb command second thing we got your another activity here with the name jacker assume diva dot api creds to activity and again for the same we got the intent filter here one more thing for other components as well you can also support a basic attribute here as Android colon exported equals to true. If the particular attribute was available, even then your component was exported. So if there were intent filters were there, it means there was exported element. If there were the particular attribute Android colon exported equals to true, in even then your particular component was exported. After that part, inside our application, we got 17 different activities. We don't have any background running service there. We don't have any broadcast receiver there, but we have a database and that particular database was exported. Done. After that part, we got the basic certificate information for our application. And this says that your application was signed with a debug certificate. It means it does not contain any valid global certificate out there. It was signed with a debug certificate that was just directly signed by your uh, Android Studio kind of application that you are using for development. That was just a debug certificate which is not trusted by the Android devices by the way. But you can directly use it to install the application. But it's not a trustworthy thing. On the other hand, we got the basic permission list here which you can see inside our application. We are we were asking for internet permission. We were asking for read external storage as well as the write external storage. And you know all the permissions were always declared inside your manifest file which you can see here other than this part we got the basic android apis all the android apis that were called inside the source code right were available here let's say this particular file contains your source code that will responsible for your database for your content provider if you just scroll down you can see we have our different sql queries here that were generally used for your database part on the other hand, you can see we have some interprocess communication or your IPC kind of things. Then we got simple shared libraries. Then we got input output operations were there. Then we got starting activity that was again used as a intent, right? 
to start a particular activity like the generally you start activity method to start or to initiate an activity after that part we got the basic browsable activity if there was any particular component that can be used to view your that, that can be used to render your web pages inside the same application let's say if you go with simple example like we all have used gmails if you click on any link that was available in an email you have received if you click on that link the link will be open inside the gmail it will not redirect you to the browser the browser will not be popped up instead of that you will get your web page rendered inside the gmail application because gmail support your browsable activity it means your web pages can be rendered inside your application instead of going to the any browser part other than this we got the basic network security information here there was any service running out there you will get those services here other than this part we got basic manifest analysis and it says that your debug was unable here it means your application will generate your higher detailed logs in the system part right because the debug was unable inside your application whenever the debug was enabled your application will always generate detailed logs right for the analysis part so you can better analyze when your application crashed what input were passed what are the errors were generated inside your application for that part you generally use your debuggable applications but when you publish the application for the production environment then you generally disable this debuggable but on this application here you are using debug beta the debug was enabled here after this part we got the basic application data can be backed up it means anyone can back up your data can back up your application data with simple adb backup command right after that part we see we got here that your application activity jakar sim dwa.api credits activity is not protected and intent filter exists there it means it can be called directly without any protection part without any option you can directly call your activity with your adb command even right then we got the same thing for your second activity api activity to api credits to activity and we know both the activities were exported because the intent filters were defined for this activity after that part we got our content provider and it says that this particular database we have here as notes provider is exported it means you can also call this database directly with your adb other than this part we got the basic code analysis here like this particular files contain some code that will be used to log your information this particular files contain some code that were used to interact with your database there and this particular files contain some code to handle to interact with your temporary file and these files contain some code to interact with your external storage so with the help of these code analysis you can also figure out like what android apis were running and where they were running let's say if you want to figure out where the data was logged if you are dealing with insecure logging activities there then you can directly go with code analysis and figure out the right file right particular class file that you have to analyze after that part we got your shared library all the libraries that were shared by your application were available here let's say we have a library with the name libdivajni.so we got the same library here but for a different architecture this time again and we got the mips library this time and we got mips 64 for different architecture again right we got the same library but for different different architecture that can be supported out there then after that part we got your dex analysis again under the dex part you can say like it can be decompiler or not the th same things were there after that part we got the basic locations like if there was any domain available inside your source code let's say inside our debit application we got a domain with the name payar2.com the particular location for this server will be represented inside this google map or you can say normal map here you can simply zoom in and zoom out to get this location right highlighted on the other hand if there were multiple uh, ip addresses there, there was multiple domains were used all these domains will be represented inside this map here and you will get the basic information about those domains here under domain malware check after that part we got the basic urls a complete list of all the urls that were used inside your application and where they were used the file that contain the url 
if there was any firebase database were there that will be listed here if any email address was available inside the source code that will be listed here if there were any tracker used like a google analytics kind of thing or your facebook kind of applications trackers were used they will be listed here all the strings all the string values that was stored inside the strings.xml files were reflected here so you don't have to navigate to strings.xml file manually it's completely available here so you can read those strings and figure out some kind of hard coded values out there or some sensitive information you can say other than this strings file we got your basic details just yeah then we got the basic hard coded value the possible hard coded value that were analyzed by your mobsf mobsf simply checks for some sensitive keyword like your apis your ids your tokens your names this kind of sensitive keywords were checked by your mobsf and if the, those keywords were available inside your strings or xml file they will be reflected here like we got the word password here ids under one underscore password because of this password word here we got this one as possible hard-coded value here because of this user word we got the possible hard-coded value here we got the key word here and we got the possible hard-coded value here right so you can also use this possible hard-coded secrets to check them other than this part all the activities that were available inside your source code were reflected here they were again fetched from your manifest file directly fetched from your manifest file same thing for your available services for your available receivers as well as for your available database or the providers you can say after that part all the files inside that archive because we know apk was an archive so all the files in the, inside an archive were reflected here and this was your basic mob asset that you can use for the basic analysis part but it will be better if you analyze your application manually by yourself just by analyzing your java code there or you can directly go with view source code so you can better search here for your file names and for your contents as well but for the basic static analysis from your mob asset that you can use to make your task much easier have a good day and stay connected.